Well, I've got to the top of Hunter Island and uh, I've decided I'm going to go down there now and sail the boat round Hunter Island at high tide when there's, not, when there's a minimal amount of tide and uh, explore the bays and see if I can catch a fish for this evening. Just going round Hunter Island. And, uh, going to go down that passage in a moment. At the moment we're doing uh, seven we're going absolutely doing about half a knot at the moment and we're doing uh, 5.9 on the uh, thing we're racing through here. I'm coming through down here, and I'm gonna, this is Lowly Mantis Pass, and springs it's six, five knots of tide, and I don't really want to go down there. I'm gonna try and creep round this corner, because I'm just trying to go round the Hunter Islands, and I'm gonna go round here, miss these rocks, and up through there, and hopefully there won't be too much tide. This is what it looks like from outside. That's one side of the passage, and I'll dip dip and go under the other show you on this is on the starboard side and I'll look go show you on the port side of the side where I'm going to go close in around that rock there and hopefully creep up the uh, other side of Hunter Island there's the weed going by 5.2 that's Marble Island and uh, beautiful beaches there's a homestead on this island i haven't seen any cattle at all so i don't think at the moment they're running any cattle at all on the island you can see the uh headland moving there pretty quick as we See the headland here and then uh, just beyond that by about 400 meters there's a load of breaking water there and that's the rocks i've got to go between the headland and that breaking water i'm basically going sideways here to get around this thing here Hopefully I can creep up here. There you can see us on there. We've just gone round that headland there, or going round that headland. Gotta miss those two little rocks out there, or big rocks. They're not, they're, you can't see them. And then I'm gonna creep on up this headland then across. I haven't got any tide here, so it's quite good. I can relax a bit. That's Croquet Island, and these here are part of the Hunter Island group. Hunter Island, these two here. All the way across there between Croquet Island and uh, thing I can't go through, it's very shallow. You can see it breaking through there, maybe. And the next one I'm not sure about, and the tide's ripping out. And it's still got to drop about three, three to four meters yet. So I don't fancy going through there and getting stuck on a rock. I'll show you what it looks like on the chart. We started off here, come round there, round that point, coming across here. We're going to go round Croquet Island and hopefully come up through this passage here and then back across and down to our uh, anchorage that we were this morning. You can see the tide pouring over. There's a kind of bar there and uh, it's starting to expose the rocks between the islands. 
you can probably rushing over there at about four knots. The tide's racing out in front, racing across the boat, probably at four knots. To this side, you can see the uh, you can see the big current going across there, and there's a few a little overfalls. I'm going to start the outboard in a minute and just uh, get through this because we aren't going. We're only doing 2.6 knots. hard to see in the sun but it's a pretty confused sea just ahead. The tide's racing to the starboard side and we're in it now. I'm probably in about three knots, four knots of current now going sideways. On that headland there you can see the island behind getting bigger. get no sensation of how fast you're going sideways till you see the land going by. We're at the moment here and I was going to go through here but uh, there's a couple of rocks in there and uh, I don't fancy it too much with the uh, tide racing out at uh, four knots. So I'm going to come up here and maybe anchor in that bay there and wait for the tide to uh, stop, which is at about four o'clock, which is in two hours time, uh, ease off. And then I'll come through here or I'll go right round the outside. Yeah, this rock's not even marked on my chart that I'm using. Uh, when I get the Admiralty chart, at, it is. go through a few overfalls here and uh, obviously there's a big underwater disturbance just here. Going through this it's telling me that there are, I'm doing 2.2, I'm doing about 4 knots, it's telling me that there's 12 meters of water under me here. Just copped a wave straight over the quarter there, I'm soaked. We're just going to go ashore now to uh, a lovely beach on Bambra Island. Must be an airfield here because there's a uh, windsock at the top of the hill. conversation with a lady that uh, lives on the island. She's got her dog there and off she goes. They've got, a quite a, they've got 50 deer, she tells me, on this island. It's not a commercial operation, but she reckons they come out in the at dusk. That's the way you take your dog for a run.
go that there on this and I'll go over there. going down now. I'm going to try and make it through between these two islands here, between uh, Bainbridge and uh, Hunter. It looks like there's a pretty good uh, channel through there and when I uh, when I crossed here the tide was coming out, ripping out, so there must be a bit of water there. Just returning to our anchorage after our trip round the uh, Hunter Island. Took me, I uh, had to wait for the tide, and took me a bit longer than I thought to get back. <laughs> 